This video is brought to you by Android Authority's Tech Deals. Want a no contact way to disinfect surfaces without liquid? Stay tuned for more details. Battery life is arguably one of the most important things to look for when purchasing a new smartphone. And while a lot of us give the screen on time metric in reviews, what's typically found on the spec sheet is often a four figure number suffixed by the acronym MAH or milliampere hour. And that indicates how big the battery is in your smartphone. But what happens when a device with a smaller battery beats out a device with a bigger battery in battery life? Let's find out. Before we dive any deeper into battery life, we need to define what a milliamp hour is. Strictly speaking, it's a unit of electric charge which is equal to supplying one milliamp of current constantly for one hour. So one milliamp hour battery can provide one milliamp of current for one hour. And a 1000 milliamp hour battery can provide one milliamp for 1000 hours. However, if the current doubles to two milliamps, a 1000 milliamp hour battery can only provide that two milliamps for 500 hours. It's quite simple maths. Of course, in the real world, smartphone batteries don't tend to last a thousand hours because the current being drawn is often much more than one or two milliamps. Given a perfect testing scenario where all smartphones draw the same amount of current, a larger battery is simply going to mean longer battery life. But in reality, this is pretty much never the case, as different hardware and software inside phones can and will pull more or less power. So it makes it hard to determine battery life given just the milliamp hour number. To properly showcase this, my wonderful colleague Robert Triggs ran a number of tests in which the subjects looped speed test G. This is a performance benchmark which really pushes the phone. The results are presented in a number of hours that the phone lasted before shutting off due to running out of juice. The selection of smartphones ranged from a Pixel 4 with a 2800 mAh battery right up to the ROG Phone 2 which has a massive 6000 mAh battery. But what you'll notice is that there isn't a strong trend shown in the results. Despite the massive range of battery sizes tested in exactly the same conditions with regards to brightness and wireless connections etc. Weirdly enough, it's the 3700 mAh Pixel 3a XL that wins the test, and not by an insignificant margin at all. It's stomped even the massive 6000 mAh ROG Phone 2. And you'll notice that even though the Pixel 4 XL has the same 3700 mAh battery, the 3a XL handily beat out the Pixel 4 XL. And our data doesn't show a trend because there really wasn't one. So it's obvious at this point that the hardware and software configurations make a massive difference in how long your battery is going to last. But what's really going on? Well, find out after this message from today's sponsor. Concerned about germs or viruses? Who isn't these days? Blasting your body with UV light might not be the best solution to viral treatment, but it's actually a great preventative way to keep the devices you use every day clean and hygienic. With the mini UV light bar, you can disinfect anything with the touch of a button. It's great for keyboards, phones, computer mice, anything that you probably wouldn't want to wash with soap or water. Since the mini UV light bar is portable, it's also great for elevator buttons and trips to public restrooms. Any surface you want to be disinfected can be done in seconds. Normally the mini UV light bars run for $100, but today you can snag it from Tech Deals for just $29.99. Check the link in the video description to learn more. With that out of the way, you need to understand that the battery in your phone is powering everything on and in the device. So that's the notification LED, the pop-up camera, the screen, the speaker, the processor, Bluetooth connections, everything. And so if a phone has more physical features that use up more power, like motion sense or always on displays, then they're going to impact battery life. And the same goes for mid-range versus high-end processors. Sure, a Snapdragon 700 series chip isn't going to give you the pure grunt and the horsepower that an 800 series chip would do, but on the contrary, it uses far less power. 
What that trade-off has meant in the past is that you kind of had to pick the high-end chip if you wanted to play games. More recently, that performance margin has got very close and I feel like you could easily pick up a mid-range 700 chipset and get good gaming performance, but of course you're using less power. High refresh rate displays are another in thing at the moment, but there's a reason why Samsung ships their 120Hz capable S20 series at just 60Hz. The increase in current usage when using high refresh rate displays is insane. The 4300mAh OnePlus 8 with the 90Hz display for example gets better battery life in our testing than the 120Hz OnePlus 8 Pro with its larger 4510mAh battery. Otherwise the specs are pretty much identical and so you can really pinpoint the refresh rate of the screen as being that point of failure. Software is also a massive factor. Just look at how consistently great Huawei's devices have been for battery life. Sure, they've got bigger batteries, but what they've also got is software that kills apps when not in use, sometimes to the detriment of the user experience. And the same goes for Oppo and Xiaomi. More of a recent issue in terms of battery life is that of 5G. Not that 5G is bad or anything, but it uses a lot more power, at least the 5G modems do, than their 4G counterparts, meaning that if you're constantly connected to 5G, you're going to experience significantly worse battery life than if you were, say, connected to Wi-Fi. And what further complicates matters is that there are tons of different 5G modems that use all different power levels, so it's hard to pinpoint which devices are gonna give you better battery life. So, what can we take away from this? Uh, well, that when looking for a smartphone with good battery life, you cannot simply rely on that four-figure metric to get a good idea of how good the battery life on that phone is. Look at the components being used, the refresh rate of the display, the always running features, and the software loaded up. Of course, if a phone is using a power-hungry 5G modem, that's gonna be a factor too. I know it sucks that we don't have a universal way of showing how good a smartphone is, and for various reasons the screen on time metric isn't necessarily all that reliable either, but until we have a, a test that we can run on every single phone in every single condition, it's just going to be a matter of doing your due diligence to get a device with the right battery life for you. And that about rounds up today's video guys, thank you all so much for watching. I will leave Robert Triggs' article version of this in the, the link in the video description so that you can check that out. I do highly recommend you check it out, it's a good read. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe, like and comment to let us know what you thought of this video. I've been Ryan Thomas with Android Authority and I'll see you later.